Okay, so in 2018, I was involved in a road traffic accident in that car that you can see. I was with my son. That time he was nine months old. Now he's four. And my friend is the one who was driving. So I was seated right at the back of the driver's seat. And as I, I sustained uh, three fractures in my right leg. That was a terrible experience for me. I had a hospital experience, like I'd never been in the hospital before. So I was, on, I was admitted in the hospital and that same day, the doctors were on strike. You know how things are in our nation. So the doctors were on strike and I needed like immediate attention. Um, maybe Gertrude, you can send the other picture, the one on oxygen. No, the one on the oxygen in, in the hospital. Okay. Now, okay, it's fine. I'll just continue even without the pictures. So, so when I was in the hospital, you know how it is. I was 32 then. And I'd never been in the hospital before. So you can imagine being in the hospital. After 32 years, it was my first time. And there I am, I'm on oxygen. I couldn't talk. Like, I'm sure you can see I have a missing tooth. I lost it during the accident. So it was a really terrible experience for me. Like, it could have got me depressed. But one thing that kept me going was the situation that was in the hospital. You know, there were other people in there that had worse situations than mine. Like I had, um, I had a tooth surgery and I needed to go for a major surgery for my leg because I had three fractures. So they had to put pins in my leg. So I was in hospital for about three weeks before they did the operation because the doctors were on strike. At some point, the nurses went on strike again. I remember the other time I needed them to fix my weights, but they said, we can't do it because we're on strike. And I was just in pain like the whole day because they couldn't do anything to me. They could not attend to me because they're on strike. But what this experience taught me was there are always people out there that have worse situations than ours. Like I remember this little girl was next to me. She was born disabled. Then uh, the other time her uncle was carrying her and somehow I don't know how he dropped her. Both her legs broke. And they said they can't do an operation on her because um, she's disabled one and two, her bones are not as strong. Then the other lady, she had a broken leg but then she had arthritis. So she couldn't heal properly. The other, the other lady actually passed on because she had an accident, then she had internal injuries. So she was bleeding from the inside and they could not help her. So she could not make it. So I was like, oh, okay, here I am. And you know, like in our, um, like in our nation, most of the nurses there in this, not because, they love to do it. They are not in this because they're passionate about it. They're in it probably for the money. So I have seen that people in hospital, they need more attention and they want care, you know? They want people who take good care of them. They want people who give them attention. But then here we are, we have nurses who are just not doing that. They are just not there for the patients. They are not supporting the patients emotionally, you know? They actually do more damage to the patients because they say a lot of, bad stuff they just don't give you like enough care remember the other time like there's a time for bed pans right but maybe like for this little girl we should ask for a bed pan in a different time which is not their time and they would refuse so she would end up missing her blankets so i was just looking at the situation and i'm just thinking so lord what can i do to help people in hospitals so after my hospital experience, I went on and I trained as um, I trained with Red Cross as a nurse assistant. 
so yeah, I've trained as a nurse aide. I've trained, um, I've done uh, attachment at a maternity home, but my main target was to work like in a general hospital so that I'll be able to help people emotionally, not just help them like with the physical needs, but also support them emotionally because it's, it's not, it's disturbing, you know, being in a hospital. Especially for me, it was my first time. I'm 32. I had a nine-month-old baby. We thank God that he didn't get hurt during the accident. So he was at home then, and I had to stop breastfeeding. So you would need people that will support you emotionally. So we don't have that, like in most of our hospitals. So I had to do something about it. So I trained with Red Cross. And also that time, I challenged my faith. I thought maybe after this, now that I have pins in my leg, I actually have two different legs. The other one is bigger than the other one. So I challenged my faith and then I got pregnant last year and I gave birth. Thank God my leg was not strained. And the time that I was pregnant, like the midwives, they're telling me, ah, no, you're not going to be able to deliver like naturally. You have to go for C-section because your baby is big and because of your leg, you won't be able to push the baby. I was like, I oh, know, just allow me to do it. I just had to push my faith. I just had to be positive. So yeah, I thank God I gave birth to a bouncing baby boy. He was 4.3 kgs. But still, my story is I want to do something in the hospitals. Like people in the hospitals, they need um, emotional support, you know, because the nurses, they are just not doing it. Well, I can say most of them, they are not doing it. Thank you.